What is going on, everybody? Happy Monday, January 4th, 5 p.m. my time. Price of Bitcoin currently at 31300 We have had a very rocky day, a rocky past 24 hours. So if you are alive and well, kudos to you. If you've made it into 2021, uh, more power to you. But we are ready to crush it in the upcoming year. So if y'all are ready to trade like a pro, make a ton of gains like we have in our community, come join the Alpha Trades community. You can go to thealphatrades.com products page. We have the Advantage membership subscription right here. Right now we have a 50% off discount. Again, 50% off, only $50 if you want to try it out for one month. And you could buy this Advantage subscription. This gets you access to all the locked channels that you see right here. We have uh, in the Advantage channels, we have a special education section, position updates. These are all the trades that I'm taking, updates on the trades, where I'm taking profit. Um, we have a user requested TA area where you can request anything that you are having questions on. We also started a new challenge, which is the 5K account challenge. We started this about 28th or 29th of December. Um, so just about you know five, six days ago. And as you can see, we've now amassed um, about $2,700. So a decent, you know, 30 to 40% gain already in this account as of yesterday. Okay. So we started off with $5,000. Uh, and in this channel, I show people exactly how I'm trading the market, exactly what positions I'm getting in and out of, um, you know, how I'm going to place stops, place, take profit area, what I'm doubling down on, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So if you are interested in stuff like this, again, this is only education purposes. This is not a copy trading. We don't give you buy or sell signals. If you want to learn with the community, ask questions and learn how to trade, this is the community to do it in. We do not provide financial advice. But if you want to see how we go about trading and how we achieve successful trades, this is the community to be in. Okay. So let's get to the analysis, right? Something that you guys uh, who are watching right now, these YouTube videos for a while, I hope you guys enjoy my style and the way I look at markets because the way I look at markets is something that I've done for about 11 years now in the traditional US equities markets and commodities markets, okay? I just translated that into crypto. I've been trading crypto since 2016, been relatively successful, but I still trade the stock market quite a bit. Largely for the last maybe two or three years, my focus has been more so crypto because the market is, in my opinion, much more easier to trade. And so I give a lot of attention and focus in my alpha trades community, this private discord for Advantage members. Again, this is the paid membership that you guys can grab right here on our website, okay? So let's take a look at the market, okay? By the way, make sure you guys hit the thumbs up, please leave us a comment of your thoughts and anything else you want covered. So Bitcoin, 15 minute time frame. what do we got? First things first, you guys know very well that I love using pivots. Pivots are critically important to me because they help me understand where the market is in terms of support and resistance levels that are identified by this automatic indicator. And then on top of that, I lay out my own rules of how I look at the market in terms of SR levels, whether that be trend lines, whether that be OBV, which is on balance volume, it helps me identify money flows. Uh, whether that's, you know, data like liquidation data that I look at, you know, who got wrecked, which people are positioned to one side or the other, how is the funding rate looking? These are all secondary things. The first and foremost thing that I always look at is raw price action, this chart right here, okay? All you really need to do for the most part is look at trend and look at raw price action. This is it, Okay. Once you get an understanding of the asset that you're looking at, the trend you have at hand, and these kinds of individual candles, then you can start marking up your chart and starting to lay out the lay of the land, which is, where are we? Where is trend? What are the support and resistance levels? Where are the weekly opens, the yearly opens, the monthly opens? These are all things that I map out on the chart, and I show my Advantage members pretty much every single day exactly where we are in terms of levels. So at present moment, what we can see and what we can identify is we had a massive sell-off overnight, right? Over the past 24 hours, I think we had about $2.27 billion in liquidations, okay? So this is the past uh, 24 hours from now, but on my Twitter feed, if y'all can see, right, 
earlier this morning, I had posted a screenshot of this right here, total liquidations, okay? $2.27 billion. So after we had a massive run up, right? From 28, 30,000 all the way to 35,000 almost, we spilled, we destroyed everybody. Anybody who was long from this day onward, meaning this uh, 31st December, 7 a.m., everybody got stopped out, okay? Why? Because generally, right, if you have your, um, if you have, if you're long right here, whether it's spot or perpetuals, and this thing went up like this, this kind of move is largely unexpected. Generally, when the market starts moving up like this, people might move their stop right here, they might move their stop up here, or they might move their stop up here, right? Worst case scenario, they might have their stop right here. Or even worse than that, they might have their stop down here, which again, it doesn't matter because you just got destroyed by this big candle, right? So when you have a cascading effect like that, what you want to do is now focus on the mean reversion. Meaning when you have big downside movement, don't just start looking for more downside. Start thinking, wait a second, how much blood was spilled? How much damage was done? And is there a trade to take out of this? Well, on the advantage side, right? We were long from about 25,000 to 25. We closed out that trade a little bit around 32,000. And then we got stopped out around 29,000 and some change. Okay. So all in all, we sold on about 30 and a half, right? So 30 and a half was really our average sell price of our entire position. That's not bad. Right, so we made from 25 to 25, which was our average from right about here ish, right, 30 and a half or so. So we made about you know 21% or so. We weren't able to sell the top, rarely do people ever do. If you got lucky selling the top, kudos. If you got lucky shorting the top, kudos. But that's not the point about markets, right? The point of markets is to be able to be consistently profitable over and over by a technique some sort of methodology that you can utilize over and over again, not by getting lucky and selling the top and not by getting lucky and shorting the top, right? That is not what markets are about. So in this situation right now, the way I'm trading this is I'm still bullish. Nothing has changed. The trend is still up. The market is still trending up nicely. So in my opinion, right, if I was in this area right here, I would still be looking for longs. And by the way, we already got into a long in the advantage side down here, or actually slightly above here. Um, and I'm looking now for more upside. Now, more upside doesn't mean that I'm definitely you know, looking for higher and higher prices. I have to now see what the market is going to show me. Is it going to dilly dally around here and maybe chop around, do some garbage like this, and then get ready to roll over? I don't know. Right? I really don't know. But what I do know is after a big sell-off like this and a big liquidation event, like I just showed you, $2.27 billion, I don't want to be short now. That makes no sense, right? I want to be long. I want to be long biased. And I want to then focus on the trend, which once again is up. And aside from the trend, what are the things that we accomplished when we had the sell-off? Number one, we once again tagged the yearly open. You guys know very well, if you've been watching my videos for a while, I like to map out yearly opens, weekly opens, monthly opens, um, and, and help understand where price is in context to those opens. Price came back and tagged that yearly open and got strongly rejected, strongly. Not only that, if you look at this ascending trend line right here that we've held from uh, almost beginning of December, we tagged that too, right there. And then on top of that, if you're a horizontals trader, right? If you're a horizontals trader, this whole consolidation period, that was wicked into. Meaning, like I said, this whole multi-day period consolidation was stopped out by this big wick. So now that tells me that there's many reasons why this could have been a massive area of support. And there was probably more buying than you could imagine. Okay, $2.27 billion got sold. And all we did was, you know, recover back uh, pretty much 50 to 60% of the drop. That just means that the bulls are really strong. And that's once again, why I say, keep an eye on the trend. Okay. So I'm focusing on a couple areas, right? If I'm long right here, 
I'm focusing on the first target as January 3rd weekly open, which is around 33,000 flat. Beyond that, what I really need to see out of the market is can price, can price get above this and hold? If it does, then I'm targeting this high. I would probably figure that price tags this level, comes back, chops around, puts in another big range, and then maybe it starts breaking up and out. Maybe it goes down a little bit further, you know, touches that yearly open once more, and then it gets ready to break out next week or something, right? Uh, I'm just, again, you know, taking guesses of exactly what I think could happen. The point of trading markets and the point of analyzing markets is to be prepared for any and all situations. Lay out as many positive scenarios on your charts and also as many negative scenarios. This helps you be best prepared just in case some, something crazy happens like this crazy event. If you were not part of our community, you were not anticipating this, right? I mean, technically no one was, but guess what? At least we went long and we got out in profit. And then when we woke up, we relonged this. So we're already in profit anyway, right? So this whole blood spill, it's like nothing really ever happened. Yeah, we got stopped that, but we got stopped that in profit and then jumped long again, okay? But sometimes you do have to deal with situations like that. Markets are never going to be just a you know, straight up or straight down, all right? Nor are they easy enough where you can just get in at the perfect entry point and ride that thing up, all right? Same thing with the other side, which is short side, okay? But if you do pay attention to the technicals of how you go about understanding the lay of the land in the market, more often than not, you won't have to rely on luck. You can rely on your skill, your risk management, your position sizing, and your ability to try to stay consistently profitable. Moving forward, um, let's see the daily candle. So the daily obviously looks like crap, right? We, we already know that this is a pretty ugly looking daily. We have about 38 minutes to close out this daily. Chances are pretty high that the daily is going to close somewhere down here, maybe even lower. I highly doubt that it's gonna close way the heck up here but it's possible. It's possible. And if it closes up here, where was the open? It was around $33,062. Again, that's a weekly open, right? That's up here. So that's, again, another area that you could consider taking profit in. And on a daily basis, if it does close like that, that candle will kind of look like this. What is that called? It's a hanging man. It's like a hanging man doji candle. Usually those kind of signify a temporary top or a potential reversal. Now the reversal doesn't necessarily mean that we have to dump straight down to 20,000. It just means that pause, let's see how the next few days unfold in this area. And either we chop around here and we break up or we start maybe developing a larger range in this area like this. And we chop around here and maybe do a bit of distribution sell off and then, you know, reaccumulate and maybe push back up, right? It's possible that we do this for one month long or something, right? Um, it, it's very hard to sort of understand the timing of markets because we don't really know how long reaccumulation processes are. We don't understand how the money flows are moving into Bitcoin or out of Bitcoin, into altcoins or out of altcoins. But what we do know is, if you follow my trading view post right here, Bitcoin dominance still pushing, when will all season start? There was a scenario in here that we laid out pretty perfectly, which was if this ETH BTC starts pushing, expect that there might be a higher chance, a higher probability of alt season starting. Now, obviously we see ETH BTC pushing, okay? Why is this ratio important? Because this is basically saying ETH is gaining at a higher percentage in terms of price than BTC is. So in that regard, it's a ratio that's developing, right? So ETH over the last, you know, 24, 48 hours went from say 800 to thousand dollars, right? That's a 20 to 25% gain versus BTC over the last, you know, 24, 48 hours, maybe pulled back more. So ETH as a ratio to BTC price is now higher. That's basically what this is. And when that ratio is higher, right? That's generally saying that 
hey, at this present moment, it looks like ETH is a stronger trending asset. And if ETH is a stronger trending asset, we use that Ethereum ratio, this one right here that you see on the right, almost as a proxy for other altcoins. So what are the other altcoins that may follow? Well, some of them already did follow a little bit. Like Link, for example, tagged almost $16 up here. But again, once BTC sold off, so did Link. Wi-Fi, one of my other favorite altcoins that I'm trading, also aggressively sold off, right? So everything pretty much across the board sold off. But now the question is, if ETH BTC keeps pushing up, and if Bitcoin, right, in this area, if Bitcoin in this, um, let me see here what's going on. If Bitcoin in this area develops a range, right, you guys know that ranging environments can actually be good for altcoins. And that might begin what we were talking about in my trading view post. I wrote this up on December 27th about alt season. Okay, so make sure y'all go check out this post. So anyway, um, if you guys are liking my analysis, please do hit the thumbs up once again. Um, you know, we are having the 50% off. You can go to our website right here, go to the products page, join the Advantage membership right here. You can use this 50% coupon. Um, there's also a link below to join the free side of our Discord, or you can just message me right here if you are interested in buying our membership. Okay. All right. So let's move on. So if alt season is starting, right, what are the assets that you could look into or focus on? Well, one of my favorites, like I've said, is Wi-Fi. Now, the reason I like Wi-Fi is because I believe that the DeFi space really has something going for it. And who is the leader, the, the asset at the helm of DeFi? It's Wi-Fi, right? Now, obviously, Bitcoin is like the original decentralized finance kind of product, but Wi-Fi, in its essence, is the definition of DeFi. So if I'm going to put my money anywhere, it's probably going to be in Wi-Fi if I'm betting on DeFi products. The other DeFi products are these right here. So I made a list of DeFi blue chips, Aave and SNX and Band, um, Uni, Sushi, right? These are all the products, all the other products that I like to keep an eye on. And today itself, SNX and Aave are doing really well, okay? It's possible that maybe tomorrow they keep continuing to do well. But if DeFi as a whole, as a whole subsector, if you will, is going to move up, then I'm expecting Wi-Fi to make some massive moves and massive strides to the upside in the coming couple of days. Band, this is the other product that I'm kind of paying attention to, okay? Band has kind of been in this big sort of range right here. Now, I really don't know what the heck Band is doing, but if it starts breaking up and out of here, you best be sure that once it starts breaking out, it's it's going at least towards like $11 or so, maybe $12-ish. Because this is a pretty big reaccumulation range if it is reaccumulation, right? And it kind of looks like it because, you know, DeFi products are breaking out. I figure at some point band's going to break out, but again, it's, I'm not really sure, right? Like for all I know, this maybe chops around here for the rest of the month, and then in February, then it breaks out, or in March, it breaks out. And while that happens, you know, all these other DeFi products are break, breaking out, right? So you have to pay attention that just because you get into a trade doesn't mean that that trade has to instantly appreciate. Sometimes you have to wait for breakouts, right? Sometimes you have to maybe chase the price a little bit, not necessarily chasing when it's 50, 100% up, but once it breaks out, well, you got to have the guts to pull the trigger on the breakout. You can't just wait for price to come back and say, all right, you know, I'm going to wait for another 10, 15% pullback because it's too high. See, the market doesn't give a crap what you think is too high or too low. It's going to do what it's going to do. Okay. So the general principle that I have in bull markets is when you see the breakout, as long as there's follow through on the breakout, I'm a buyer. Okay. I'm not going to be looking for deep pullbacks. Because here's the thing, in bull markets, markets kind of want to move like this, okay? That's a good trending bull market. You don't want a breakout like this, and then it goes fizzles out, and then it goes down here, and then it comes back up, maybe pushes back up, and then it fizzles out again. See, that's not really a true breakout, and I don't really even want to trade that. 
I want breakout. I would even pay up here to buy. Even if it comes back here, I'll buy right here. And then once it starts pushing up again, I'll add above this key high again. See, that's how I would want to trade. I want a nice movement up, swift consolidation movement up. Let me see here. So we talked about liquidation data. We talked about funding rates, right? Um, funding rates were relatively high across the board, whether it's BTC or ETH, ETH especially, you know, um, you can look on Binance or Huobi, Bybit. That just means that there's many people longing the crap out of uh, Ethereum. That's really what's happening. ETH um, is much higher, obviously, than BTC, right? BTC across the board has calmed down a little bit. It was much higher like 24 hours ago, but now it's better because once again, we had this big wipeout. And so in big wipeouts like this, when funding rates calm down, what that means is you don't have to pay an extreme price to keep your long position open, right? So when you don't have to pay an extreme price, well, that, that's good because that means that more participants, especially large players, with millions and millions of dollars can get involved at a cheaper price, okay? So I think funding rate is a little bit more bullish for BTC, maybe not so good for ETH. And historically, you know, funding rates do have sort of a predictive pattern where when funding rates are really high, you could kind of ex expect maybe, you know, a, a choppiness to the market. Maybe the market pulls back a little bit more especially ETH because it ran up like 25, 30% over the last, you know, 48 to 72 hours. So, you know, don't think that ETH just has to keep going up because, you know, it's possible that it just calms down and that's okay. Because if you're like us, you know, we've been long in ETH and the advantage side since about 595 or 594. So we're up a good, you know, 50 to, uh, let me see how much we're up actually here, somewhere around here. Actually, we're up about a good 72%, right? So we're, we're doing great on our position and I'm not looking to cut ETH anytime soon. I trimmed some at 1,000, I trimmed some at 800. Now I'm looking to trim some probably at the next um, big resistance level, which is previous all-time high. That's honestly the next big resistance level for me, this high right here. And that might come in a day, a week, or a month. But that's what I'm looking to hold out on. Now, it is very possible that if ETH goes about ranging, there are some untested levels below us. For example, there's this one right here, okay? Weekly SR, that's about $789. So let's just say 800. That is a possibility that ETH comes down there, goes into a recumulation process for maybe a couple days, maybe a week or two, and then pushes back up, you know, maybe um, later this month or February or March, okay? Just something to keep an eye on. Um, let me see here. I have some other tweets that I've written out. Make sure y'all check out my Twitter feed, folks. Um, you know, I've been talking about Aave. I've been talking about the DeFi blue chips. I talked about Bitcoin a couple hours ago. You know, even on the advantage side, like the information that we provide and the kind of communication that you get back and forth on the advantage side, in my opinion, is well worth the investment of 97 a month. Okay. But you could test it out yourself. All right. So that's all I have for y'all. I hope you guys enjoy this analysis. All right. Take care. Uh, happy bull market to you. Happy 2021. Hit the thumbs up. And I hope to see many of you in our community. Cheers.